Good morning. My name is Matt Starr. I'm the CTO for SpectraLogic. I'm here to talk to you about Black Pearl. One of the first questions a lot of people ask is, what is Black Pearl? And Black Pearl is a new way to write to tape. It uses S3 or DS3 interface, RESTful commands to push data up and then down to LTFS tape. In today's tape space in HSMs, the complex complexity of having to move data from an application down to the archive is not only expensive, it's hard to manage. Black Pearl allows you to actually use RESTful commands or RESTful state transitions and S3 commands to move data up into the archive and down onto LTFS tape. You can get any of that data back by doing get commands or bulk get commands and pull the data back out. So how does Black Pearl work? Well, there's really three parts to Black Pearl, three physical parts to Black Pearl. The first one is the client. The client is the, idea, is the piece of software that's actually pulling data from the host machine or the application and then pushing it up to Black Pearl. There's the Black Pearl appliance, a 2U appliance with four flash drives in it, and then a connection to tape on the back end, and the physical tape library where the LTFS tapes will sit. The data movement in Black Pearl comes from the client. A bulk put command pushes data to the Black Pearl appliance. It lands on the flash drives inside of Black Pearl, and then the back end processes pull the data off of the flash drives and put it out to LTFS tape. When the job is finished, no other, none of the user's data remain on a flash. It is all flushed out to the tape. DS3 interface is simple to use. It's HTTP RESTful based. So you can use put, get, bulk put, and bulk yet. So how is Black Pearl different than an HSM? An HSM system, system today tiers data from primary storage to a second tier and possibly a third tier. It uses time, size, extension of file, type of file, directory structures. That tiering system works today, but it's really for kind of an best way to say it is an unstructured or unworkflow data. Black Pearl really fits in where there's a workflow, where the data is based around a workflow. The data is done in sets. It moves into the archive via a set, in other words, a completed movie, a set of oil and gas uh, seismic information from a certain plot of land, a certain set of genome sequences. All go into the archive and most likely will come out either in partial, in partial restore or in a complete restore of all of those objects back up to the primary store so they can be worked on. So HSMs, again, tear data down and attempt to tear it back up. Black Pearl is really just a direct thin layer on top of tape. You can put data into the archive, you can get data out of the archive. It is not doing a tiering system. A little earlier, I, I used the term S3 and DS3. So I need to probably explain what those are. First, S3 is Simple Storage Services, and that's by Amazon. It's a RESTful uh, protocol that runs over HTTP to put data to the cloud and get data back out of the cloud. DS3, or Deep Simple Storage Services, is an extension of those Amazon commands, S3 commands. We've added three commands to that interface. The first is bulk put, the second is bulk get, and the third is eject bucket. So bulk put and bulk get are the same as put and get, except there are a list of files that you want to bulk put or bulk get. So instead of putting one file at a time, you can actually make a call called bulk put, put a thousand files up to the archive, come back later, do a bulk get, and get 500 objects out of the archive. Eject bucket, just like it sounds, take a set of tapes that are in a bucket and eject them out of the physical library, possibly for DR. So what is a client? A client is a piece of application code or software that runs on the client's machine and is either an, a standalone application or is linked into the client's workflow application. It could be a MAM, it could be a genomics piece of software, but it's the piece of software that actually hooks in and moves data up to Black Pearl using bulk put and gets data back using bulk get. It uses either our API, application programmer's interface, to, use, to do the bulk put, bulk get, or it uses our SDK, software developer's kit, and links into our libraries to do bulk put and bulk get. It could support the third command, which is eject bucket, which is the command that allows them to take a set of tapes that are in, tied to a certain bucket and eject them out of the library. So let's talk a little bit about backup and archive and Black Pearl. The first thing is, is let's talk about backup. Backup is a second copy of your first copy of your data. And it's created so that in case you lose your first copy, you can actually retrieve that second copy and restore the backup. Archive is the idea of taking the data off of that primary store, the first copy, making a second copy of it, and then getting rid of that first copy. Some people try to take their backup and say, I'm going to 
back up and make a second copy of this, and I'm just going to keep those because they're my archive. As the primary copy, ch primary copy changes, I'll just keep second copies of it all the time and keep them going forward. That's really not an archive. At best, it's a very lightweight archive. The downside to doing this kind of idea with an archive is that you have no metadata, you have no idea of which backup has the very specific file or very specific version of that file you're looking for. So when you think about Black Pearl in a backup and archive environment, Black Pearl certainly could be used to do backup, but it's not its target market. Black Pearl could be used for what we call lazy backup. Anything that comes into the primary storage systems, you could push a copy off to Black Pearl and use it as a backup. More importantly though, you're already into the archive space because as you push that down and do that lazy backup, and then you groom off the top end of that disk as files get older and older, you're automatically archiving because you still have a full copy of every version of that file in the archive. So where do you want to use Black Pearl? Black Pearl is really a workflow-based product. And what I mean by that is when data is the actual asset that you're trying to monetize. If you were to look at IT systems that have email archiving and I could archive off of a NAS, ser NAS server or something like that, that's a good place for HSMs and active archives. Black Pearl really fits where you're working with data sets, complete movies or all the frames from one movie. It could be genomics data where the data comes off the scanner of a set of cows and you want to archive that set of cows away for the rest of the time. Maybe you're going to pull it back and look at it later, but it's one set of data made up of many objects or a single object. The real important thing here to remember is there's a workflow that's deciding what data is important, and the workflow is also deciding what data is not important. The second part to remember is that ones and zeros, the actual data itself, is what's being monetized. It's either monetized directly or it's one level away from being monetized. The size of that application, you need to be about 500 terabytes or bigger. At 500 terabytes, you're starting to grow into the one petabyte and then the two petabyte size.